today is um, uh, thank you again, again for the uh, opportunity to present. Um, VA started this process, but how the open source process and open innovation uh, has been a driver for facilitating a radical change and transformation in the VA. And to highlight how that's an example that can be uh, leveraged in, in many other places, not just the United States. Uh, I'm personally am based in Canada and work internationally and have been uh, looking at the U.S. system benchmark uh, and a reference implementation of how we can truly leverage open source. I noticed that um, so I'm going to just quickly go over the agenda here and and what I'll do because of that is spend a little bit less time, especially now that we've used up a bit of time here, on providing background on the open source model itself. I will touch on why we need a paradigm shift a little bit, and then I'll focus on um, uh, the VA and the VISTA ecosystem and how that contributed uh, to the, the transformation that the VA has experienced uh, over the past 15 or uh, 20 years. I'll touch briefly on international adoption, and then, and then Dr. Matt King uh, will provide a demonstration of some of the components in VISTA uh, that have helped drive the uh, transformation of the VA and how um, they've been used uh, to provide the kinds of feedback loops that we believe are necessary uh, to transform health systems. So I think a lot of you will know uh, or are going to be very familiar with uh, these symptoms. Why we need a different approach, it's clear that health IT is not been leveraged to the extent that uh, is possible or has been expected. It's been difficult to share uh, information across systems in, in North America, especially uh, even here in Canada where we have uh, essentially single-payer health system. It's been very difficult to tie together the different um, solutions and so on that, that uh, we've uh, implemented over the years. Uh, it's very difficult to measure how effective our investments have been in health IT uh, for the same reason that we have a challenge bringing together the different um, uh, feeder systems that would feed into that. Uh, and it's not gotten any easier. I was involved in, in a, a two of the first um, regional health network projects in Canada back in the early 90s and the Saskatchewan Health Network and the Toronto Health Network. And in both cases, where our major challenge was uh, integration and also some of the uh, other issues that related to the software uh, licensing and so on. But that hasn't gotten much better, unfortunately, in, in over the years. The other key point is we're reinventing the wheel, both locally and globally. Uh, we're trying to going on on a uh, on a on any scale for that matter uh, the price tag for building integrated systems has been <clears throat> uh, bandied about on uh, in different countries and so forth and it's always extremely high here in Canada we're talking about tens of billions of Canadian dollars uh, the US probably multiply that by 10 and I think you've seen you know already you've experienced firsthand in the UK uh, wh what that might be in terms of your own um, uh, initiatives over the past few years. Uh, the bottom line is I think what we're missing <clears throat> is a health IT system that provides uh, the ability to create health system-wide evidence-based feedback loops that give us the ability to, to continuously improve and learn from our mistakes and learn from our successes and translate them into improved software, improved knowledge bases, improved uh, processes, and so on that uh, can drive uh, real change, both in the technology, but also most importantly uh, in, in clinical care and uh, in cost and uh, wellness. Um, we've had a lot of expensive lessons over the years. I, as I mentioned, uh, 
the US UK NHS Connect obviously project that's been foremost in your minds I'm sure but here in Canada also we've had uh, some billion dollar lessons here in Ontario with the Smart Systems for Health project and also the British Columbia's uh, initiative both of them receiving failing marks from the provincial auditors and uh, we're wondering what it's going to be like in the US now that the uh, era funding program is in place and uh, there's going to be a huge amount of money tossed at, at um, uh, adoption of electronic health records and so forth. So I think the two, these two quotes are, are very relevant. Uh, the first one basically saying that we can't solve the problems we've got today with the same thinking that we used to create them. So we definitely need a paradigm shift. And uh, it's very important that we learn from experience and, and not repeat um, the same mistakes that others have made. And what we need in a nutshell uh, is a holistic ecosystem perspective, uh, one with feedback loops in it so that we can, as I mentioned, we can improve the software, improve the knowledge, and so forth. Because health systems are really bottom-up systems. They're complex adaptive systems. They're not top-down. And you need to be able to provide uh, the kind of information and um, infrastructure that's necessary to allow the kind of model that I'm showing in this in this slide where we have continuous evaluation and improvement going on across the, the full spectrum of the health system wellness research delivery teaching and so forth but with the patient or consumer uh, focus at the heart of it I don't think any other thing any of that's new to anyone uh, the, I think what's been most difficult is trying to actually make that happen um, and, and that's why I'm going what I'm hoping to be able to underline uh, has happened in the VA probably not consciously entirely but um, certainly it, it's best example I think today of what can be done by taking that approach um, this is just nice to say that uh, it, it provides that feedback loop to uh, improving um, health IT components as well as the knowledge and so on and so forth that, that go with that and it, and it can be done and extended to the entire global learn from each other on a global scale this slide this is, these are the open source freedoms that uh, are, are have been posted on the GNU org site for many many years now Just change focus in uh, having provided that background and start talking about the, the VA and its transformation as a uh, an example of a successful open source ecosystem. Uh, the VA um, 15 or 20 years ago was considered the worst healthcare system in the United States in terms of a place to get care. They even act, they even made it one of them uh, where, where um, you know, people were literally afraid of going in there to get care. Uh, uh, veterans would um, a process of radical uh, transformation um, in in I guess it was around I don't know the exact date, but it was during Ken Kaiser's time. And the notion was basically applying this whole idea of uh, evidence-based improvement. But in conjunction with that, um, what was happening was it was both a uh, clinical and administrative initiative to improve care through um, evidence-based collaboration and improvement. Uh, and the software itself, the support systems themselves, became part of that whole effort. And VISTA itself. It was developed by the VA, um, by its own programmers, working hand in hand with and side by side with clinicians, using very much the, pro the kinds of processes that we talk about today, like extreme programming and um, rapid prototyping and so forth. And so what ended up happening was that the VA itself evolved um, and transformed itself uh, by 
growing its software in the direction that clinical improvement required it to go. So it was a very interesting um, and unique environment in terms of software evolution and, and, and also applying and, and using the software. Uh, I think this slide is kind of out of, out of order here. Um, I'll probably come back to that. But why is the VA a good benchmark? Well, first of all, uh, it's been the subject of many, many peer-reviewed studies. There's no marketing hype there. The VA doesn't make any money from selling Vista. It just gives it away um, uh, through the Freedom of Information Act. Um, and, and so there's a lot of uh, documentation and journal articles and so on that talk about uh, the kinds of improvements that have been made in the VA. And uh, I'll be happy to um, uh, send, I've been collecting these for many years now, and I'll be happy to share these with uh, anyone who's interested. If you can just leave your uh, email address with um, uh, with, the, uh, with Bharat or, or um, Natalie. Uh, the other thing is, as I mentioned, uh, the VA is an evidence-based ecosystem. Uh, and the E hyphen there is there for a purpose. Uh, what you'll see when you look under the covers of the VA uh, system is that um, VISTA is, is very tightly integrated and also provides the, fr uh, the framework for the evidence-based feedback loops that um, I was talking about er earlier for clinical improvement. And I'll be giving some specific examples of that uh, as we go along. Um, it, the VISTA infrastructure itself on the clinical side uh, is 99% open source. There are some proprietary components uh, in, on the VISTA imaging side um, that uh, are necessary, at least necessary, but uh, IMA uh, procedural terminology codes, which are um, proprietary, but for the most part it is an open source application. Uh, and the other thing that's interesting is the VA looks more, resembles more the rest of the U world's health systems than it does the US um, uh, private sector system. It is much like a government, well in fact it is a government run system, uh, it's like a single payer model like we have here in Canada and in most other countries in, in, in the world. Uh, the VA itself is the largest health system in the U.S. There are 5.3 million, uh, I think it's about 5.6 million patients now in the VISTA system with 7.7 .7 million enrollees. There's uh, quite a no large number of healthcare professionals involved in the system. There are many hospitals, over 163. Uh, that's That number has been declining as they move to more home-based care and uh, clinic-based care, uh, which is an interesting uh, fact, figure, or and fact in itself, uh, because that's been facilitated by the technology as well as the uh, improvements in in care processes. Uh, the other thing that's Im important to note is that um, about 70 percent of medical students uh, uh, go through a VA hospital as part of their training. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, um, a very strong affiliation with uh, academic institutions and uh, uh, not to mention that uh, uh, a lot of people have been exposed to this as part of their uh, rotations. It is in the public domain. It, it's probably that's the most extreme form of open source licensing. There is no copyright or intellectual property license associated with, with it when it comes out of the VA. Uh, it's free, as I mentioned. There's, an, there's a public FTP site where you can download the VA's um, um, version of the software. What World Vista has done is take some of the, um, modify the software uh, World Vista, by the way, is a nonprofit that was formed about 10 years ago to facilitate um, uh, the community for collaboration and continuous improvement, uh, and to also provide training and in, in, in other uh, community services that help drive its adoption. 